Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today is going to be a in-person pretty much demonstration and discussion of how you can get better aim on pretty much any game that you play. I know a lot of people watch Apex Legends specifically on my channel, but today's video is going to be more or less to help you on Apex, CSGO, Valorant, Warzone, any game. The discussion I want to bring up for today is something that I wish somebody taught me whenever I was first learning how to play first person shooters. And I have a camera on my hand because I want you guys to see the overall movement and issues. I almost call it like an OCD with the mouse pad. It's where I will lower my sensitivity as an example. Right now, I have an example of 18.5 inches per 360, but I'm gonna drop this down to, switch this over to centimeters and you can change this distance however you like. Um, I'm gonna showcase this at 53 centimeters per 360. This is almost kind of what I call a, a breaking point where I start to get really uncomfortable at certain edges of the mouse pad. We all have a very spectrum of aim that we utilize. No matter what, even if you're a high sense player or a low sense player, no matter what, you're going to use a spectrum of aim. So an example, whenever I were to shoot, and the reason why I'm using this exercise, I'm gonna switch over to a different exercise in just a moment, just to kind of showcase and highlight an example, is that you have to use your forearm with a lower sensitivity. And whenever you move, you'll see my hand go completely to this opposite end and you want to be able to get that quick snap. You want to be able to go boom, boom, and then sw swap back and forth. Now, the problem that you see with most individuals is that you have one or two things that you're very comfortable with, with your sensitivity. I call it the, the sweet spot, where there's a certain part of your mouse pad where you feel most comfortable in. And then once you, let's say, track and move to this over other location, you almost start to feel your arm stiffen is more or less a sensation. You start to feel uncomfortable. You don't really know where your aim is gonna to go to. Let me see if I can recreate that feeling by just flicking back and forth. And this is quite a low sensitivity. I'm uh, not the lowest, but not the fastest either as you're flicking back and forth between two targets. I will probably be able to demonstrate it more on motion shot. And I, I kind of felt it there a little bit where you almost stiffen your arm a little bit where it doesn't make any sense too when the movement is not necessarily a big movement whatsoever. And you always feel the need to constantly reset your aim and accuracy for where you feel like the home would be. And the score is low because we're, we're doing a demonstration here to really kind of explain things. So if we sm smack back and forth between targets, there we go, you see, and I'm running out of pad here. So there's a question that you have to ask yourself at home when you're running a high versus low sense. One, does it feel comfortable? That's the first thing you need to ask yourself. And then two, how much space, real estate space do you have? Is your desk have enough space? I'm using right now a very large mouse pad as an Artisan Otsu Hayate. So that large mouse pad that I'm utilizing here that you see on screen really helps me go back and forth, back and forth. If I didn't have that mouse pad, I may need to adjust my sensitivity or you're gonna see me do things like this. So if I were to snap between the two angles, this is a 180 distance. So let's say you were to try to get back to that sweet spot and then you lift right after to go back and forth. There are different ways to achieve this and we're gonna talk about this and break this down in just a moment. But you see how the lift, you see this also with high sense players. You can go the opposite spectrum. Let's say we were gonna run uh, 24 centimeters per 360. And you kinda of wanna sit in that little sweet spot where you feel most comfortable, but utilizing the full mouse pad over time will help you a bit more. Now the reason why you feel uncomfortable whenever you move to that certain angle has everything to do with your arm placement, how you're sitting, are you sitting straight? Or is your arm on the desk? Is it not on the desk? How are you able to keep a nice fluid movement? It's almost like waving your hand. Believe it or not, waving your hand back and forth just like this and loose is probably the best motion that you can have because it's consistent. Imagine trying to draw a perfect circle. So if I had, let's say like, a, I'm gonna use this little controller thing here. Let's say you had like a pencil and you're just trying to draw. You do a circle, you don't tense up. If you were to tense up, you start to get a little bit jagged or it starts to feel a little bit wrong but you want to keep that as smooth as possible. So let's utilize a different exercise because this also applies that same feeling and sensation. Even if it's up close and personal to you, you will find, and we're going to talk about how you solve for this, is essentially utilizing those exercises and bouncing back and forth, lowering your sensitivity or raising it depending on where you struggle most. So if we utilize speed and we'll do motion shot because you want to keep up speed and momentum. The faster you move, you're going to find the faster movement, you'll start to tense up or start to panic and I'm going to call out the minute that I do it. So let's do that exercise right here because this is a really bad habit that I have as well and it's taken me a really long time years and i guarantee pros have this issue too it's where you just kind of lock up your arm because you're afraid of where it's going to go so if i were to keep snapping back and forth between these and i felt it there just a little bit because i'm going to lower sense and it's weird i actually don't feel it as much on a lower sense as i do on and you can feel it there on that angle too 
So if I were to lower this, let's go to, for example, 18.5. I'm just calling out when I have it and my aim is not going to be perfect. This is for demonstration purposes, really. I want hopefully you guys to be educated and really learn from what you're saying. So if I were to reset this, because speed is what causes you to kind of tense up and it's a tension of speed that causes your arm to lock up. Whenever you're just kind of keeping a precise movement, you're just keeping accurate, you can be loosey goosey, but whenever you're really loose with your arm and your forearm, you lose speed and momentum. So you need to find the middle ground between the two and I highly recommend snapping between it. You kind of feel it there. It's whenever you have to like migrate away, but you know what's interesting about this? I didn't necessarily have this issue when doing a full 180 movement. See how I'm undershooting there? So how do you solve for this? Well, it really comes with practicing the speed and relaxation and finding a sweet spot. So I kind of tensed up my arm there initially, but now I'm kind of finding my groove. And it really happens whenever you have further targets away. Especially whenever, again, we have that 180 movement. This is much easier to do going forwards and backwards. It's when you have to incorporate the movement going up and down plus various angles where you're going to find that you kind of struggle because it's going to cause your arm to move up. You see, here's a that was a really great example. So if we look at the arm moving up, you're moving, instead of just going like this, bouncing between your hand at like a fingertip grip, you have to migrate your arm. So your whole shoulder and forearm have to move along with it to track it. You're no longer just using the muscles there. This is why everything is based on muscle control and it, you have a spectrum of aim where you can control your sensitivity and feel very comfortable. But no matter the sensitivity, you're always gonna run into this issue. So let's say I were to speed this up and go to 10 inches per 360 which is much faster, I will still run into the same problem, but at a different spot within my aim, depending, depending on how far it goes. So an example, once you kind of get into that groove, the center, centers piece, and these are two different, and that kind of felt it there a little bit. You feel it less dramatic, and I felt it there, because you tense up. As you get more micro shot and you, and you get more precise, you're gonna feel that you're tense. So it doesn't matter if you run a faster sensitivity or lower sensitivity, you really find the sweet spot of where you can find comfort and relaxation. And that this is like almost like a part two to my prior video where we talked about how to find the perfect sensitivity. But this is almost more OCD with the mouse pad as a whole. So you wanna use utilize exercise and aim trainer just utilizing the full mouse pad. Or even if you're in game, where you find a certain task or anything like another great one would be let's go to custom uh in in just aim lab and i'm using aim lab because it's free sphere track here's another great one and this works a lot especially if you're using a very slow sensitivity where you just want to use the full mouse pad anything that forces you to full, use the full mouse pad without lifting and we're going to utilize one more exercise at the end here see how i'm utilizing the full mouse pad and this is the faster sensitivity you see how I'm on the faster sensitivity? I'm too tense, and it's because I was just practicing uh, again whenever I was... It's like you have to just relax the arm. This movement is not difficult, but the minute you tense up and try to become accurate, you have to remember to relax and kind of ease into it. So if you use a lower sensitivity, as an example, you run into these problems in both spectrum. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which spectrum you use. And if you don't have this problem at home, I think it's fantastic that you don't, but just be aware when you get tense or you get nervous or you get in game that this does occur to a certain degree and a certain level. It's a completely unavoidable unfortunately you just you kind of run into it where now because there's a lower sensitivity you're kind of using your forearm and you're just kind of relaxed I tend to tense up more at a higher sensitivity than I do at a lower sensitivity I kind of migrate it kind of depends it almost depends like on the day but the problem is that you had to kind of lift and reset that's why lower sensitivity players run into this issue so again you have the sweet spot within the mouse pad and let's talk about that let's do a different exercise and let's utilize the Valorant aim training one where you're cutting corners because realistically, in certain games, you don't necessarily have to use utilize the full screen. You just have to worry about, let's say, entry. So if you utilize this, if you had, I'm going to utilize a opposite spectrum here, just to showcase the example. Let's say I drop this down all the way to, uh, let's just do hat. Let's do 32 inches per 360. That's really slow. Let's see here. Let's see how slow that is. Maybe it's too slow. Okay. Yeah, this is a good example. I can still control this. I don't think I've ever utilized the sensitivity before but as you're cutting corners, right? Where do you center off and where do you feel comfortable or where can you reset? You see how I reset immediately, you go to that center piece. You don't necessarily at a low sensitivity whenever you're moving around a corner, you don't have to cut back. Sometimes when you cut a corner, you can reset to the, the center spot that feels comfortable. So just as long as you have the mouse pad in real estate, let's say somebody was up, then you flick over here and they were flying as if they were, they were a jet or if you're playing Apex Legends, you need to flick over. 
well, this is how you reset and where you need to kind of reset your mouse to. So low, lower sensitivity is definitely doable on this and how you do it. Like I can even drop this a little lower and reset. You'll see how my hand resets. So if I were to go all the way down to, let's say, uh, 40 inches per 360, it's definitely quite low of a sensitivity. Did it actually work? Let's see here. Yeah, it did. And that's gonna be quite slow. But it's still doable. You see how I'm, I'm able to use my movement. Now, if somebody does a, comes from behind, I have to do a complete 180. Then yeah, I have to bounce around and do and do anything of that nature just to kind of compensate for the speed. So even if I dropped it even lower, let's say we do 80 inches per 360, you'll start to see a smoothness kind of occur. But you have to use those inches of the mouse pad and know where your, your sweet spot is, and then train on the outskirts because you may need to track. Let's say I were to somebody showed up at this corner here and I need to flick, but then I can't necessarily just flick and then control my recoil on this side of the mouse pad. That's not necessarily doable. So you need to find a sensitivity that also makes sense for the encounters that you're trying to get in. See how I'm like, ha like there's no way I could track at this angle. So you also have to be realistic about what your expectations are, your mouse, the current setup that you have and what you're trying to shoot for. So let's do the opposite spectrum of this and then we'll wrap up the video and I apologize if it's a little long. Let's do four inches per 360. That is very, very fast. Same thing where you find the center of the mouse pad, you know your sweet spot and you know what to reset to. Because you know, once you're kind of in that sweet spot in the center, you, you don't have to necessarily worry. Of course, all this can be done a lot more, a lot more efficiently than what I'm doing whenever you peek an angle and peeking an angle is a whole different thing. But you see how I'm still tense here? Because even though you are in the opposite spectrum, you have one where it's on the outskirts of the mouse pad, right? That you have to control and reset. But notice how this involves a lot of wrist movement. So if I'm cutting, let's say somebody showed up here and I have my wrist completely uh, utilized, you tense up. This part of the arm does tense up and it causes a problem where like if I keep going, where do I go from here? Well, I have to reset. You have to reset what you're about to shoot. So it's all about resetting and finding the comfort because there's only so far that you can go joint wise until you're like okay like that's unrealistic like if i were to try to track at this weird angle it's almost better to reset and predict where the enemy is coming from so understand mouse pad control that's the whole theme of this video mouse pad control mouse pad control find your, your sweet spot where you feel comfortable your sensitivity is going to change that sweet spot so maybe this little box maybe a little wider and find how far you need to make a movement and whenever you need to reset it so whenever you cut an angle and you're always going to run into this tension but you have to find through the tension, relaxation, if you tense up too much, you're only going to cause, you're only gonna hurt yourself. But remember, it's contradictory, but you have to have tension to have precision. Like you have to have those muscles refined. You can't just be completely loose, even on lower sensitivity, if I was kind of like, ah, uh, you know, just running around the corner and like, I, I, I already do it inherently. I already felt it where you kind of call, you, like, you just can't be loose and just kind of like, oh, where is he? You know, flick, 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 flick. Of course, you know, because the aim, you have to stand still, but you, you over, I, like, I already do it inherently. We already do it with our mouse control in general, where you just kind of cut and you, you can see it the minute my aim tenses up, so I'm loose. And then I like, you see where the muscles are kicking in to control this. And of course, just remember to cut angles appropriately and slice the pie, all important factors. But I hope you guys find this video helpful. Hopefully this really helps somebody out there. I know I wish I had somebody tell me about this early on, about when you reset to the center of your mouse pad and whenever you don't, and finding those angles where you have tension, and then finding good posture and alignment. It's all ap applicable to various sensitivities. It doesn't necessarily, excuse me, work for just one sensitivity. You have to keep adjusting depending on what works best for you. But again, how you practice this to wrap up, just as a friendly reminder, go in and find where you tense up and just try to find relaxation if you tend to tense up there you're like wait why am i tensing up put them some calming music practice maybe working out can get help alleviate some of the attention so you're used to it so you relax find a way to ease into it and even with the lower sensitivity the same thing applies always just try to find a way to if you're doing that waving motion that it should feel very much relaxed and comfortable and practice that use a not small refined movement but practice a large scope of movement so when you do get small and refined you are still just as relaxed if you're tense whenever you move over and you're already tense and remember tracking is a, a part two to my micro tracking series that you have to be very relaxed whenever you're tracking it's like tense tense to switch and then you just you can almost i can almost feel the, the muscles in my hand as i move back and forth i can feel them in my forearm here whenever i'm moving back and forth here 
there's a tension whenever I'm flicking, moving back, but then I had to instantly relax. And it's kind of hard to do, even as I'm as like whenever you're doing a, a small movement, you're trying to like imagine someone who's like a micro spec over here and you're trying to track it. And there's like a little head, it's like a little arc bouncing back and forth. But you can feel the muscles here. I'm trying to identify what you really feel. I feel a little bit of a bump here. And of course you, you feel it in your hand. And of course, you do not want to really engage your wrist. The worst part is to utilize the wrist right here and use that to go back and forth because you really can't be doing this forever. You really need to use the forearm. You need to use your fingers here for health, finger health. Again, finger health and hand health is really important. But if you do this constantly with your wrist, it's going to hurt. I promise you, it won't feel comfortable. Be very, very careful with how you handle all these muscles and what you're doing. And it's why most people have those issues. Just make sure to sit up properly sit up straight don't have your shoulders too high do not have them too low make sure your wrist is sitting comfortably so it, it can easily be leaned on with your fingers as well as your your forearm and of course this changes on based upon grip style again hope you guys found this video helpful don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys all in the next video